One of the biggest complaints I've seen about the iPhone 10 online, besides the fact that they can't use Touch ID, is that people don't wanna try to use iOS without a home button. Instead of the home button and the normal swiping up to get control center and swiping down to get notifications, everything's just been scrambled around. And it begs the question, what's even real anymore? Don't panic though. It turns out that the notorious gesture system actually isn't that hard to get used to. It took me only maybe a day. Let me show you what I mean. Firstly, swiping down does still bring your notification shade down, but it will only do so from the left side to the beginning of the right gap or the end of the notch. Swiping down in that right gap where the signal and battery icon are will instead bring down the control center, what was originally brought up by swiping up from off the bottom of the screen. This is because swiping up from the bottom of the screen now brings you home. To do this, you need to swipe up from the small line that is now at the bottom of the screen or from where it would be on the home screen, which is basically the edge of the phone. To get to multitasking, most people I've seen swipe up in the same motion to go home, but hold it in the middle for a little bit to get the cards. While this does work, there's actually a faster way. Instead of swiping to the middle from the bottom, you can actually swipe off to the right really quickly to get it to immediately open the multitasking view. There's also a new quick switching gesture. Simply swipe to the right along the bottom of the screen to slide into the last app, or swipe to the left to get to the next app you used after it. Another thing people were complaining about missing was accessibility mode, which brings the screen down uh, to make it easier to touch. Now, you can still do this without the home button by going into settings, general, accessibility, and turning on reachability in there. Then all you have to do is swipe down at the very edge of the bottom of the screen to pull the screen down. In addition to the gestures, the button functions have been scrambled around a little bit, thanks again to the missing home button. Firstly, to now turn off the device, you now have to hold down the sleep-wake button and one of the volume buttons, it doesn't matter which one, together at the same time. If you hold down the sleep-wake button on the iPhone 10, you'll actually get Siri instead. One of the cool benefits of this though is that Siri works more like a walkie-talkie and that she only listens as you have the button held down. That's good because it means you can have Siri listen only when you're speaking and cut it off when you're done. This allows Siri to not gather other noise around you and makes it easier for her to figure out what you actually said. To take a screenshot now, instead of home and sleep wake button, you can hold down the volume up and sleep wake button for a second until the screenshot appears in the corner of the screen. And lastly, you can double tap the sleep wake button to get Apple Pay to launch. If you have Face ID set up, it'll recognize you and you can just place your phone against a reader and you're all set. And there you go, that's basically it. Um, those are all the major changes in navigating the OS. Otherwise, things are basically the same. Um, at least in iOS 11 on any of the phones. Now, I again, it, it was a little weird to get used to for the first day, but after that, eh, I don't really miss the home button. Uh, and Face ID works pretty well too. Save that for another video though. Um, but if you like this one, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the new iPhone 10, of these gestures, of this video. I would love to hear from you. And if you want more videos like this, please check out the rest of my channel. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe. As always though, Thanks for watching.